All right, Chance, let me get right into it, man. It is a uh, crazy time in the world. You're with your wife, Kristen, your two beautiful daughters. How you guys been holding up? Uh, we're good. Uh, we're, we're getting through it. Kirsten is an amazing uh, mother and partner. And she what is she is, right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. She gave me the, <laughs> the look as soon as you brought it up. But no, she's, uh, we've, it's, it's definitely been a learning experience. We, uh, I think one thing that I noticed about myself is just between the nanny and the night nurse for the youngest one and school and my parents, like there were a lot of, you know, uh, ways that I had help that I don't have anymore. And in the beginning of it, it was like, you know, just kind of overwhelming. I think I thought it was at least. And, uh, and I quickly just learned that this is, this is what it is. And this is uh, the best time in the world to get to really, you know, spend time with your kids and, this is the most time I've ever spent with my, with yeah. my, with my whole. Me, me too. Me too. I, I thought I knew my kids, but now I really know them. And I know you've got a uh, little Marley who's eight months. Uh, yeah. We've got little Goldie, our new baby, who's uh, um, just about six weeks. And, you know, my oh, wife gave birth, you know, in Long Island, you know, during the whole craziness. And I had to drop my wife. I never knew the strength of my wife. I knew she was a strong woman, obviously. But, like, I have so much respect now you know with the view that i had of giving birth in the middle of all this what do you think about this whole time that we're in right now like when it's over when we go back to whatever version of normal will be when you look back on this extended time what are some themes that'll stick out for you uh that's a good question i feel like you know for one one we already touched on is just family like i have a way better understanding of the value of my family and like who they really are in terms of like what makes me me or what what makes life comfortable for me i think another big thing is empathy i think like this is a time where because of the amount of of uh you know of infections and deaths that have happened because of uh the media coverage of of you know the actual health crisis um in addition to the economic crisis in addition to just like the human you know the humanitarian crisis uh it's there there's this is the most important time to care about other people other than yourself and i think that's something that will will carry on hopefully after this um just people's level of, of understanding yeah you and i both share a great sense of faith you know my, my faith is the most important thing in my life you know faith uh my family my friends having some fun yeah um I've been, you know, praying a lot. And I wondered, like, how much have you been leaning on God during this kind of crazy time? And what, what has that sort of spiritual conversation been like, if you don't mind sharing? This has also been probably the most that I've been in the Word and, like, reading the Bible, like, in, in a few years. And, you know, my wife has constantly reminded me that we have to have our relationship based in Christ and just, you know, to, to, to respect each other with, you know, the grace that Christ does. And so... Uh, that's been extremely helpful. And then, yeah, I think it's just been, you know, there's nothing, nobody, I think, you know, at least on our level of just like people saw this coming and it just reminds you that, that God is in control and any yeah. of the things that you think, you know, to be so, uh, finite and true and absolute, you know, they can, you know, get, get, get taken away or turned upside down at any moment. And so, you know, my, but my God's belief. got this, right? I mean, yeah. God, God, God's got this. It's like we're all, you know, we're all freaking out. It's a whole crazy time. But as I think about it, it's a reminder of how small we are. And it, it's like right. that breath of fresh air is the breath of God coming through us going, you, now better, you better recognize, like, right. it's just a reminder. It's like when you're swimming in the ocean and you're an adult <laughs> and, like, you get caught in the wish wash. Like, man, I kind of forgot Mother Nature doesn't mess around. Like, yeah. like, just whipping its tail around. And that's what this time feels like. It's definitely... A reminder <laughs> yeah remember after the like financial crisis in 2009 i think like people kind of went away with the idea of materialism sort of changing a little bit you don't need eight cars you know how many pairs right. of shoes do you need how many houses do you need it was kind of like you know but kind of scaled back a little bit and that's all yeah. proportionate right rich people poor people everybody kind of i feel like at the end of this pandemic i know from being in new york you're in chicago like when there's a sunny day i wake up and i'm like Man, I got this quarantine. I can't wait to hang with my kids. But if it rains for two straight days, right. I'm on my hands and knees going, God, help me get through this. Yeah. Like the weather. Like I have a newfound respect for weather. <laughs> That's, I feel you totally. 
I mean, it's like today was the first sunny day in a few days here in Chicago. It's been gray and, you know, and, and foggy. And that completely, like, you know, sometimes dictates my mood. I think the, the best thing that I feel like I figured out is that, you know, God is faithful and that at the end of the day, um, there's always some time in the day to connect in the word and, and that, you know, fear and worry is like, you know, pointless just in, in terms of the, in, in terms of the things that we have no control over. We just have control yeah. over how much faith we put in God. Yeah, I think that's well said. Um, on the music front, I mean, you're so great live. It's so obvious. You love being live. It's You can see it in your fans, the way that they react to you being live. Obviously, none of that's happening right now. Do you yeah. feel like, is there a void that you're trying to fill with that? Or what are you handling that way? Definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so for me, like, performing is like the most, you know, it's the best part of the music. I like it more than writing music, more than recording music. It's uh, it's my my favorite thing in the world, and and so like I think the fact that the large gathering entertainment world is like kind of like at a standstill has been hard on everybody in the business that does anything with large gatherings and stuff. So, yeah. uh, you know what's what's really cool is a, is a couple of weeks ago, or not even a couple of weeks ago. Damn, these days feel so long. Like last <laughs> week, actually, I did uh, I did a, a live stream with with Verizon where I performed a few songs and and used the the live stream space to like uh shout out and support like local businesses in chicago and we uh you know benefited a few uh uh small businesses in chicago and made sure to 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 shout them out and and uh and, and try and just like gather even for the people that weren't in chicago just to understand how important the, the small businesses are and, and yeah they are um especially where i'm from in chicago i'm from 79th and a lot of the, uh, you know, it's a, you know, uh, strong, predominantly black neighborhood. And a lot of our businesses over there aren't owned by people in the community. And so for the few that are, they're taking a major hit on this whole, you know, uh, global pandemic and, and sure. stay at home order time. So uh, got to support them and try and make sure that they're uh, thriving, not just through this pandemic, but also afterwards. Man, you know how many rappers I've interviewed. You know how many artists I've talked to. I so seldomly hear this real sense of deep humanitarianism. I hear it in you, man. And sometimes oh, yeah. when you're talking, I'm like, this dude's like 40 years old. And you're not. You're like in your <laughs> mid-20s. Like, you're so wise beyond your years. You care so much about Chicago. You don't Yo, just talk you. about it. You do it. It's in your action. It's in your wallet. It's in your deed. It's in your word. It's like, Thanks, it's man. you. It's who you are. Where does that come from, man? Is that your faith? Is that your family? Is that just you? Yeah, I think it's... It's indirectly my faith. I think mom, I, I get a lot of like my sense of understanding the kindness from my mom, who is a big, um, to me, she exemplifies like the essence of like, you know, be kind to your neighbor, like the the, the kindness of Jesus, the, the that fruit of the spirit. And then my, my dad and his side of the family were all community organizers or, um, you know, grassroots activists. And they, uh, my, my great grandmother marched with King and organized my grandmother, worked for Harold Washington when he uh, ran for mayor in, in Chicago. And so I think my, those I just doers, watched, man. man, those are achievers. Those are, that, those are doers, right? I mean, those yeah. are, I call them, I call them happen makers. Like people <laughs> happen, like not everybody's a happen maker, you know? So you have like your mom is, is like the perfect Christian, right? And Christian means Christ like, you know, yeah. she exudes that. And then like pop side, grand, all that side is like, happen makers and yeah. you're just like this this offspring that's just got both those qualities man that's beautiful no thank you man yeah we try and we try and stay uh involved and in, and in, in working and you know i got uh social works the uh the the non yeah. that we started back in jesus i think it's like 2015 2014 or 2015 and uh We've, we've we've been able to do like some really dope stuff in the city and like what get break it down what sort of like digital programming does social works do so we've we've done a lot of stuff over the years we did uh my state of mind which was the uh uh we compiled like a, a list of all the mental health facilities private and, and publicly owned that uh or, or government owned that we're in the state of illinois and worked with the state and the local governments to like make it all accessible for people we did uh um, the New Chance Fund, where I donated uh, $2 million to, to CPS um, and have raised, 
I think over seven million dollars since then. Um, we've we've uh, open mic is actually how we started. So basically, I grew up on the open mic scene. This dude named Brother Mike Hawkins was like my mentor, and he like showed me how to you know the stage presence and kind of just talked to me about like galvanizing the fan base and like even though I only had a few people, just how to keep them updated on myself and. Uh, he, he put on a lot of artists that are from Chicago that, that have blown up since then, Saba, No Name, Vic Mensa. Um, and uh, he passed away, I think, when I was 19 or 20. And we Brother started, Mike did? I'm sorry? Brother Mike passed away, uh, I think, six years ago now. And right after that, we started Open Mic in his memory and brought back this Open Mic thing that we would do. And uh, we made it a, a monthly event. It's been going on for five years strong now. Uh, That's so cool. and it's, it's one of my favorite things, but you know, since the pandemic is going on, a lot of our uh, programming has been kind of, kind of moved around. So open mic now actually has, we did a really cool thing called uh, open mic live where we did prompts every week and every week we give away $500 to a different student who will win and, uh, and, and kind of just use that to keep people in the, keep these, these young creatives, I don't call them kids, these young creatives in, uh, yeah in a creative space and uh and, and they they put together some amazing pieces and i was just i was really proud of that what are some of the most creative things that you saw these guys do i mean the the cool thing is like so with open mic it's it's always like a an an open kind of uh format platform right so it's like you get on stage you can dance you can sing you can rap you could do stand up you can Put together a PowerPoint, whatever you oh, want wow. to do. It's like a, it's almost like a town it's hall. It's that broad. It's not yeah. just like rapid. It's, and there and there's no in, in our history we've never had a competitive uh, you know feeling to it. So it's it's not a talent show. It's literally like to to hone your skills. And when we first first started, uh, we we would do these prompts like I used to grow up doing, where they you know it's the week and they yeah. give you like a poem to respond to or a quote to respond to or whatever and you would make your piece based on that. I just thought it was cool to see these 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 young creatives uh, work based off of a prompt. I thought that was just like the coolest thing in the world was that yeah. they were, you know, uh, kind of like, I don't know the right word, but just like, you know, uh, streamlining their content through one uh, yeah. theme, you know what I mean? Well, they just needed like a little, like a little platform to jump off on, like a starting right. point. Exactly. And then it's fun to see these creative minds, if given that prompt, like where they take it, because then again, they're going to start to feel good about themselves, right? Yeah. Because they're creating this like this forward momentum, whether it's right. magic, rapping, PowerPoint, whatever. Exactly. So cool, man. You know, one of the things I want to ask you about was teachers. I know when you were a kid, you were probably misunderstood every now and again by a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got the, um, I needed the uh, Twilight Awards, which was cool, yeah. man. That was, you know, raising a lot of money. Uh, you've given a lot of money, as you mentioned, to uh, some special teachers out there. How has your perspective of teachers changed over the years now that you're a father and uh, a successful businessman? Oh, man, it's so different. <laughs> uh, I feel like, well, for one, like just, and I feel think I speak for all parents when I say like, well, I'm so appreciative of teachers now that I'm with my kids 24 hours a day. Like, please oh, yeah. come take these kids. But huh. I think <laughs> at the same time, I think it's like, what really helped me out was when I did the, uh, when I first donated the first million to CPS, I didn't, I didn't really understand on how we were going to basically put this money into the school. So like, right. I, I knew that, that we were going to create these menu items for, for teachers to, to use and, and give it to them in a grant format so that they knew exactly where they could apply the money. But, uh, we really got in the weeds with the teachers and the principals and, and really like helped them put together um, a, a comprehensive plan on how they were going to use this hundred thousand dollars and uh, going school to school and working with them and just seeing how invested, how much money these teachers have put into their own classrooms already um, just gave me a new appreciation for them. But yeah, when I was a kid, I, uh, <laughs> I did not get along with the teachers at all. And, and I think it's the truth is, it's just like everybody's a person, you know what I mean? At the end of the yeah. day. And it's like when you find a teacher that's a great person there, they are usually a, a superhero in a super important role. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're people that are great beyond just that job that they have, but they're placed in a very important position in life. And so, yeah, I had a few teachers that <laughs> were not, you know, uh, 
conducive in the growth of my confidence or 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 even in my knowledge of certain subjects but yeah uh, you know those were they were people and they were learning at the same time while they were teaching us and so it to me that just makes the special teachers more special well man you do such great work chance it's so uh, admirable and i'm so grateful to be able to talk to you and i'm a huge fan of your music and are you making new music in quarantine i've, I've loved some of the, the technology that's come out what are you doing yeah, so I've been recording a little bit at the crib, and uh, and then I live next door to my studio, so I, I've gone down there a couple of times. Um, What's inspiring it, you? It, it's I think really what inspires me is other music. I like when, when I listen to music enough and just like, you know, sing in the shower enough or whatever's going on, it's like at a certain point, I'm like, all right, I got to get back in the studio. But it's... Uh, it's a, it, a cool thing happened recently. I was doing a feature for a song and I had the instrumental in, in the studio, my library back there. And, and uh, my daughter came in and, and, and uh, I have like a, uh, like a 57, like a handheld microphone as yeah. well as like the actual one. And my daughter brought, picked it up and, and started uh, singing. And it was the first time that I'd ever seen her like really in a, you know, performance mood. Like she sings around the house a little bit, but she was like, acting like I act when she sees me. Before. Yeah, yeah. It was a... Uh, you had never seen that before? Never, never in my life. And she's she can get really, she can get pretty shy. We've had like, you know, not to tell her business, but she's just, she can get shy. And I think yeah. like, it was a cool thing to see her open up with me in a moment that, you know... Are you I rolling her. on it? I, I did, I, I recorded it. And once the song comes out, I'll probably post it or whatever. Yeah. But it, How would you feel if she started to go down that path and wanted to, I don't know, get into the, to the business? You know, what's funny is I think, and before I was very, uh, like when I first had her and I just had the thought of it, I was always kind of anti just because yeah. I know how, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, just being honest, treacherous this business is and how, you know, like uh, it, it doesn't always align with my faith and stuff. And I think just over time, just seeing how smart she is and discerning she is in her young age is just made and and then just seeing how much she loved it she loves music it's not something that i would you know want to keep her away from but i also think that she could be great at whatever she does so I there think, you go right yeah you know, it's whatever she wants to do man that's great we got it we got to stay in touch man i just had my my fourth kid it's my third girl wow. and i'm terrified I, I, I love them and I, it's so crazy to think about their lives i look at them i stare at them i start to think about the future and like when I'm not around and all those tempting moments and those things that like you and I've been through yeah. that like, but like, we don't picture that our, our daughters are going to have to go through them. So man, I'm going to need some, you're going to have to hold my hand on that stuff, man. So I'm, I'm freaking We're in out it together. Stuff. I'll definitely link with you. All right, cool. Listen, um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Um, you're the man. I mean, it's just, it speaks volumes about your character and your music and um, can't wait to hear the, uh, the new track that's coming out. So thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.